Hello everyone and good afternoon. I am Kyle Ancheta. I am here to determine the validity of the following argument, whether if it's valid and invalid. First of all, I will be using the symbolic form of S and P to represent the simple statement. Okay, let us read the statement. If I study, then I will pass the exam. I did not pass the exam, therefore I did not study. Okay, in the present tense, S will be if I study and P is I will pass the exam. And the second sentence, sentence is not P since it's the negation of the first sentence of P. Our conclusion is not S because it's the negation of I, if I study of S. Let's form now let's form the symbols in order to construct a truth table. S implies P is our first premise. Our second premise is not P. The conclusion is not S. Okay, since we have two variables, which is the letter S and P, we multiply them by two, so we got four rows. That's done. Okay, let's construct a, construct a table. S has T, T, F, F. P has T, F, E, F. The third column is, a, is S implies P, so it's a conditional statement. In order to know, to know the value, the truth value of the third column is to look at S and P using con using the conditional statement method, where S is the hypothesis and P is the conclusion. So we so we only have to look at the statement P in order to know the truth value of P. So P has T F T F. So our third column is T F T T. Fourth row is T because it is the base conditional row. Fourth column is the negation of P, so we just have to negate the truth value of P. So not P has F T F T. The fifth column is the negation of S, so we just have to negate the truth value of S. So not S has F F T T. In order to determine the validity of an argument is to look at the first and second premises and the conclusion if it has a truth value. First row is T F F. Second row is F T F. Third row is T F T. Fourth row is T T T. So the fourth row has all the truth value. So this argument is a valid argument. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Good day everyone. I am Teresa Acebo. I'm here to determine the validity of the following arguments, if it is valid or invalid. So first, I will be using the symbolic form of B and D to represent a statement. So here's the statement. If I can buy the car, then at least I can dream about it. I can buy the car, or at least I can dream about it. Therefore, I can buy the car so our first premise is not B representing F I can't buy the car not B since it's a negation of I can buy the car um, not B implies to D D is the representative of at least I can dream about it and our second premise is B I can buy the car or D at least I can dream about it and our conclusion is B representing to I can buy the car so since we have two variables which is the letter B and D we will multiply them by 2, so we will have 4 rows. So, let's contract them into a truth table. So, in the first column, we have the B and D. And the truth value of B is true, true, false, false. And D is true, false, true, false. So, in the second column, we have written the not B since we can use it in our first premise so how do we get the truth value of not B 
simply get the opposite value B there in the first column. So therefore, not B is false, false, true, and true. Next is the first premise. Our first premise is a conditional statement, meaning conditional statement is false if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. And if both of them are false, then the statement is considered to be true. So in our first premise, the conclusion here is D or the statement D. And the not B statement is our hypothesis. So we will base on the conclusion when the statement is conditional. So our hypothesis, hypothesis is false and the conclusion is true. Therefore, it is true. Next is false. False, then it is still true. Next is true. True, so it is true. And false true therefore it is false because the conclusion is false so in our second premise the connective that we have used here is or so you should remember that when we use the or the statement would be true when anyone in the statement is true so it means even we have only one true in D and B statement, then it is still true. But if they are both false, then it, that is also false. So, in our conclusion, we just have to copy the truth value of B in the first column. So, the truth value is of B is true, true, false, and false. So, we will going to identify if what number of rows we will use as our basis to determine if our argument statement is valid or invalid our both columns must be equally true which is our first and second premises so let's check the row one is both true so we can use it as our basis the second row is also true and the third row is also true so we can so we can use the row 4 because they are both false. Therefore, to determine if the statement is true, the both three rows must have a true conclusion in order to be valid. So let's check again. Row 1, the conclusion is true. Then row 2, the conclusion is also true. However, in the row 3, the conclusion is false therefore our argument is invalid because only the two row rows has a complete true statement that's all thank you good afternoon everyone i'm Edina Vista i'm here to determine the validity of following arguments where it's valid or invalid First of all, I will be using the symbolic form of H, M, and R to represent the statement. Okay, let's start the, to read the argument. If I'm going to join valuable tournament, then I will buy a new ball. If I'm buy a new ball, then I will not buy a new shoes. Therefore, I will not join in valuable tournament. Our H will be if I'm going to join volleyball tournament. Our M will be I will buy a new ball. In the second sentence, our M will be I buy a new ball. And R will be I will not buy a new shoes. Therefore, our conclusion will be I will not join in volleyball tournament. That is not H because it's negation of H. And now, let's form the symbol to order to construct our truth table. H implies M, that is our first premise. M implies R, that is our second premise. And not H, that is our conclusion. Okay, since we have three variables, which is the letter H, M, and R, we multiply them by two. So we got eight rows. 
let's construct our truth table. First, we have H. Second row, we have N. Third row, we have R. Fourth row, we have H implies N. Fourth row, we have N implies R. And last row, we have not H. In first row, we have H. T, 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 F, 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 F. And second row, we have M. C, T, F, F, T, T, F, F, and third row, we have R, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. And our fourth row is H implies M. It's a conditional statement to order to know the truth value is to look at H and M. Using the conditional statement method, where H is hypothesis and M is conclusion. So we only have to look the H and M. How we do know if false by locking if the H are true and A and RM will false. It's equal to false. And now our fourth row will be T T. F, F, T, 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 T. And our fifth row is M implies R. Our fifth row, it is the same process in the fourth row. So we got, we got C, F, T, 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 F, T, T. Our last row, we have not H. It's negation of H. So we we negate the H. So we have F F F F T T T T. In order to determine the validity of an argument, is look at the first premises and second premises. The conclusion is has truth value. This argument are in in this argument. This is our invalid because our first row, the first and second premises are truth, but the conclusion are false. That's why it's invalid. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Nuriel Dillelor, and I'm here to discuss and determine the validity of the following argument, whether it is valid or invalid. So let's see how we use the truth table to analyze an argument. As you can see, I've made up an argument. If there is sugar on milk, then I will drink milk. If there is no sugar, therefore I will not drink milk. So here's all of my premises. And take note, it will be valid if I have a tautology in my final column. First thing we need to do is do a translation. I need to get all of these statements condensed down to P and Q. So let's assign this now. So the if there's a sugar statement is gonna be my P and I will drink milk statement can be my Q. So my first premises is P then Q. And now my second premises are that there's no sugar statement is not P and I will not drink milk statement is my not Q. This is my, so the not Q is my conclusion and let's do a little translation. I'm going to try it, squeeze, squeeze it right in here so that can be looking at it. So here we'll be starting. So this is my P column. I have two statements. So I need four rows and the P goes to truth, to truth and to false. And Q column alternate, alternates by truths and false. And now I need to build each of my lines in my premises statements. So if P then Q, as you can see, the first column is both, the first column of P and Q is both true. So it's gonna be true. The second column is true and false, so it's gonna be false. The third column is true, same as the fourth column. Let's proceed to the negations of the statements. So, not Q is the negation of the statement Q. So it's gonna be false, true, false, 
true and not p is the negation of my statement p so it's gonna be true true and false false so you can see the for row has all the three argument true arguments i mean sorry it means that this argument is valid and that's it the, the this argument is all true and the argument is valid i hope you understand what is the validity of the argument is all about and thank you have a nice day uh, hi this is rona maybilano and today i'm going to discuss my own arguments and logical connectives whether it is valid or invalid so here's my statement if i eat a lot then i don't do work out if i don't do work out then i will become chubby therefore if i eat a lot or i don't do work out i will become chubby so as you observe nagamit ko p q and r para mo represent a given statement so the given is already there all we have to do is to determine the first premise and the second premise and then the conclusion so here's the p q and r and this one is a conditional and if we say conditional um nay duha ka rule ona if ang duha ka letter is pareha true yon like true and true 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 is false uh, true true is true and false false is true so ikaduha if ang second letter is true then true yon and if ang ikaduha is false then obviously it is false so let's proceed the p in q so the p in q is the true and true is it will become the true so next is true and true is it will become true kay pareha sila true and then the true and false so kay nag ang ang so next is true or false the second letter is false man so it will become false and then it will become false and then ang ikaduha nga letter is true so mahimo na siyang true true and then false false is it will become true false false it will become true okay did you get it so the next part is q oh nay arrow nga r so diri ana punta magkuha q and r so diri a so more gyud pun to ang rule true true it will become true and then true or false it kay false man ang ikaduha nga letter so it will become false and then the next one true ang ikaduha so it will become true false false it will become true and then true 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 and uh, false false na siya kay false ang ikaduha and then the f in true true ang ikaduha nga letter it will become true and f f is true pareha sila same okay the next one is the disjunction so guys as you can see nagamit ta og black na pen it, it is because the given is color blue so that that's why para makuha na to para makita na to ang unsay lang kalahian okay next is the disjunction then the next is the disjunction so when we say disjunction para mahimong true kailangan na ay isa ka true so if wala then it is obviously false so p in p o q so hani p o q so na may isa ka true mahimo na siyang true then the next na so oh, so true gina siya and true false true gina siya kay na isa ka true then true 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 False, false. Don't become false, obviously. False, false. It's okay. So lastly, the kini. So it is conditional. Angamit, and then same rule. So let's find out. P kani asha, and then ang R. So pa pa padong dito a. True or true? It will become. True. 
next is true and false. So, kay false man ang second letter, it will become false. Next, true and true. It's true. And then, the next is true and false. False. So, true and true, it will become true. True and false. So, false. So, it, this one, false, ang, ang una, then the second letter is true, it will become true. False and false, it will become true. That would be all, and I thank you. Take 104. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Adrian S. Aguilian. I'm here to represent you my argument, if it is valid or invalid. Now, this is my argument. If you bought bread, then you went to the store. You bought bread, therefore you went to the store. In this example, it is obviously a valid argument. We can analyze it using a truth table by representing each of the premises symbolically. We can then look at the implication that the premises together imply the conclusion. If the truth table is always true, then the argument is valid. Will get B represent you bought bread and S represent you went to the store. Then the argument becomes premise 1 B implies to S, premise 2 is B, and conclusion is S. To test the validity, we look at whatever to test the validity, we look at whether the combination of both premises implies the conclusion. Now, here are the table. In the first column, premise B, T, T, F, F. And the second column is S, T, F, T, T. And the third column is B, and plus to S, T, F, T, T. And the fourth column is not B, T, F, F, F. And the fifth column is not S, T, 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 T. Since the truth table for B in place to S is not B in place to S is always true, then this is a valid argument. As you see, there are three... Mm. Yo, mana to? Thank you.